It is no secret that slavery was a dehumanizing institution where human beings were treated as property and denied their basic rights. However, what is less known is the extent to which enslaved people were subjected to medical experiments without their consent, often resulting in immense suffering and even death. It's hard to imagine that medical advancement could come at such a cost, but the truth is that the contributions of enslaved people to modern medicine cannot be ignored. From the 18th to the mid-19th century, slave owners and doctors regularly experimented on enslaved people without any regard for their well-being or human rights. These experiments range from vaccination trials to surgical procedures, all with the aim of advancing medical knowledge for the benefit of white society. It's estimated that tens of thousands of enslaved people were subjected to medical experimentation, and many of them lost their lives in the process. In fact, one study found that the average lifespan of a slave subjected to medical experimentation was just five years. But the cruelty doesn't end there. Enslaved people were often dehumanized and treated as mere objects, with their bodies used as vessels for experimentation without any consideration for their pain or suffering. In this video, we will be exploring the stories of some of these individuals and the medical experiments they were subjected to. We will also be looking at how the legacy of this dark period in our history still affects our modern society, as many African Americans continue to face unequal access to health care and medical discrimination. Before we jump right into the video, be kind to hit the subscribe button to stay on the channel. To fully understand the gravity of this topic, we must first take a step back and examine the societal norms of the time. During the 19th century, enslaved people were seen as property rather than human beings, and as such, their bodies were often used for medical experimentation without their consent or knowledge. One of the most disturbing examples of this practice was the use of enslaved pregnant women for surgical practice. In the mid-1800s, Dr. J. Marion Sims, often referred to as the father of modern gynecology, performed a series of experimental surgeries on enslaved women in Alabama. Sims used these women to perfect his surgical techniques for repairing vesicovaginal fistulas, a condition that can occur during childbirth and can result in urine leaking from the bladder into the vagina. Sims performed countless surgeries on these women, often without anesthesia, and kept detailed records of their pain and suffering. What's even more disturbing is that Sims believed that black women were immune to pain and often disregarded their complaints of discomfort during these surgeries. In one particularly gruesome account, Sims performed over 30 surgeries on a single woman, known only as Anarcha, without providing any pain relief. He also performed experiments on new mother named Lucy, who had given birth a few months prior and hadn't been able to control her bladder since. During the procedure, patients were completely naked and asked to perch on their knees and bend forward onto their elbows so their heads rested on their hands. Lucy endured an hour-long surgery, screaming and crying out in pain, as nearly a dozen other doctors watched. As Sims later wrote, Lucy's agony was extreme. She became extremely ill due to his controversial use of a sponge to drain the urine away from the bladder, which led her to contract blood poisoning. I thought she was going to die. It took Lucy two or three months to recover entirely from the effects of the operation, he wrote. Sims's experiments on enslaved women continued for years, and he eventually went on to perform similar surgeries on white women, using the knowledge he had gained from his previous experimentation on black women. But Sims was not alone in his use of enslaved people for medical experimentation. Other doctors, such as Dr. Walter F. Jones and Dr. Robert Marion, also performed surgeries on enslaved pregnant women and enslaved men in the pursuit of medical knowledge. Dr. Walter F. Jones was a physician and medical researcher who lived in Alabama during the mid-19th century. In 1844, he was appointed as the physician for the Alabama Penitentiary, where he began conducting experiments on the prisoners. However, his experiments soon expanded to include enslaved people, whom he purchased specifically for the purpose of using them as test subjects. Jones conducted a range of experiments on the enslaved people, including surgeries and injections. He claimed that he was testing new surgical techniques and trying to find cures for diseases such as tuberculosis and pneumonia. However, his methods were often brutal and caused immense suffering for the enslaved people. One of the most infamous experiments conducted by Jones involved the surgical removal of an enslaved woman's uterus without anesthesia. The surgery was performed in front of other enslaved people who were forced to watch. 
Jones claimed that he was testing a new surgical technique for the treatment of uterine cancer, but the woman did not have cancer. Jones also injected enslaved people with a range of substances, including morphine and arsenic. In one experiment, he injected an enslaved man with a large dose of strychnine, a toxic substance that causes muscle convulsions and eventual death. The man suffered for hours before finally dying. Jones's experiments were not only cruel and inhumane, but they were also completely unethical. He did not obtain informed consent from his test subjects, nor did he provide them with adequate medical care after the experiments. In many cases, the enslaved people died as a result of the experiments, or they were left with permanent disabilities and disfigurements. There is also the case of Dr. Robert Marion. Marion was a physician from South Carolina who was known for his experimentation on enslaved people. He conducted experiments on enslaved people to study a variety of medical conditions, including smallpox, yellow fever, and typhoid fever. Marion believed that by studying the bodies of enslaved people, he could gain insight into the workings of the human body as a whole. One of the most infamous experiments conducted by Marion was the one in which he inoculated enslaved people with smallpox. In the late 18th century, smallpox was a deadly disease that killed thousands of people every year. Marion believed that by inoculating enslaved people with smallpox, he could study the disease and develop a vaccine. In 1796, Marion inoculated an enslaved man named Onesimus with smallpox. The experiment was successful, and Onesimus survived the disease. However, Marion went on to conduct further experiments on enslaved people, often with devastating results. In one experiment, he inoculated an enslaved woman with smallpox and then used her blood to inoculate others. The experiment resulted in the deaths of several enslaved people. Marion's experiments were not only unethical, but also deeply traumatizing for the enslaved people who were subjected to them. Many of them were forced to endure painful and dangerous procedures, often without their consent. They were treated as mere objects for experimentation, rather than as human beings with their own rights and dignity. But Marion wasn't the only one fascinated with smallpox. Dr. John Quire, a physician from Virginia, would go on to purchase Onesimus with the hope of learning more about the process of inoculation. Quire was intrigued by Onesimus' immunity to smallpox and began performing a series of experiments on him. He inoculated Onesimus with smallpox virus, then observed and documented his symptoms. He also inoculated several other enslaved people in his care, as well as members of his own family. Another well-known figure in the history of medical experimentation on enslaved people is Dr. Samuel Cartwright. Cartwright was a physician and plantation owner in Louisiana during the mid-1800s. He is best known for his theories on drapetomania, a supposed mental illness that he claimed affected enslaved people who tried to escape from slavery. Cartwright believed that drapetomania was caused by a derangement of the mind and could be cured through various medical treatments, including amputations, whippings, and other forms of physical punishment. He also believed that the condition was hereditary and that enslaved people who exhibited symptoms of drapetomania should be prevented from having children. To support his theories, Cartwright conducted a series of experiments on enslaved people. He measured their skull sizes and shapes, studied their behavior, and conducted various medical treatments on those he deemed to be suffering from drapetomania. Cartwright also invented another disorder, dysesthesia ethiopica, a disease affecting both mind and body. In 1851, he published an article in the New Orleans Medical and Surgical Journal, where he described a supposed disorder that he observed in enslaved people called dysesthesia ethiopica. According to Cartwright, this disorder was characterized by a range of symptoms, including insensibility to pain, diminished understanding, and a propensity to steal. Cartwright believed that this disorder was caused by the physical and psychological differences between white people and black people. He argued that black people had thicker skin and less sensitive nervous systems, which made them less susceptible to pain. Additionally, he claimed that black people had a childlike mentality and were prone to stealing, which he believed was a result of their supposed natural predisposition to idleness and thievery. Cartwright's theory was widely accepted among his colleagues in the medical community and was used to justify the institution of slavery. According to Cartwright, the only way to cure dysesthesia ethiopica was to force the enslaved person to work harder, maintain strict discipline, and in some cases, resort to physical punishment. He believed that these measures would cure the disorder and make the enslaved person more productive and obedient. Cartwright's theories and experiments were widely criticized during his lifetime, 
and many people in the medical community viewed him as a quack. However, his ideas about drapetomania and the supposed inferiority of enslaved people continued to influence racist beliefs for many years. Today, we recognize Cartwright's theories as both unscientific and deeply problematic. They were used to justify the cruel treatment of enslaved people and to perpetuate the notion that they were somehow less than human. Unfortunately, the use of enslaved people as test subjects did not end with the abolition of slavery. In fact, it continued well into the 20th century, with black African Americans being used as test subjects for various medical experiments. One such experiment was the infamous Tuskegee syphilis study, which began in 1932 and lasted until 1972. The study was conducted by the U.S. Public Health Service and involved 600 black African American men, 399 of whom had syphilis, and 201 who did not. The men were not told that they had syphilis and were not given treatment for the disease, even after penicillin became widely available in the 1940s. Instead, the researchers wanted to study the natural progression of the disease. As a result, many of the men suffered from blindness, heart disease, and other serious health problems, and many died as a result of the disease. Another example is the case of Henrietta Lacks, whose cancer cells were taken without her consent in 1951 and used for medical research without her family's knowledge or consent. Her cells, known as Hella cells, have been used in countless medical experiments and have been instrumental in the development of treatments for various diseases. However, the Lacks family did not learn of the use of Henrietta's cells until more than 20 years later, and they have not received any compensation for the commercial use of her cells. It is important to note that these are not isolated incidents, but rather a pattern of systemic racism in the medical field. Black African Americans have historically been excluded from medical research and have been subjected to unethical medical experimentation without their consent. This has led to a lack of trust in the medical system among the black African American community, which has had serious implications for public health. For many years, medical professionals, scientists, and researchers used enslaved individuals as test subjects, often without their consent or knowledge, to advance medical research and other experiments. From the infamous Tuskegee syphilis study to the use of enslaved women in gynecological experiments, these atrocities were carried out on a large scale and with little regard for the lives and well-being of the victims. In conclusion, it is important to question why the Western media has devoted so much of its resources and energy to painting the continent of Africa in a negative light. The fact is that Africa's mineral resources, strategic metals, and natural resources are significant factors in the wealth of many Western nations, including European nations, America, Japan, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. The continual denigration of Africa and its people in the media is a function of white supremacy, plain and simple. This harmful practice must be recognized and addressed by those affected by it, whether in Africa or in the diaspora. It is important to work towards a more balanced and nuanced portrayal of Africa in the media, one that reflects its rich cultural and intellectual heritage, as well as its significant contributions to the world in fields such as mathematics, science, medicine, architecture, language, metaphysics, religion, and spirituality. By challenging negative stereotypes and promoting a more accurate and positive image of Africa, we can work towards a more just and equitable global society. It is time for the Western media to recognize the harm that their negative portrayals of Africa have caused and to take responsibility for their role in perpetuating harmful stereotypes. Only then can we move towards a more inclusive and equitable world for all. Please don't forget to like the video, subscribe to our channel and share our videos to let more people know the truth about blacks and to hear their own part of the narratives. Thanks for watching.